In this video, we're going to see the new beta version of Bricks Builder. Hi, my name is Stratos, and I'm constantly producing video tutorials about WordPress. Please subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. Bricks just released the 1.3.7 beta version, and since this is a beta version, please do not install it in a live website. This is only for testing. If you go to the bricksbuilder.io slash changelog URL, and I will put the link in the description below, you will find the full changelog list. In this video, we're going mainly to focus in the Query Loop Builder. Now, I had a problem with the URL to download the beta version because if you go to your account, you will not find anywhere to download the beta version. If you select another version download, you will see that you don't have the version 1.3.7 beta. Even if I refresh here, I will not see anything inside here. Uh, if you go to the change log, you will not find the URL either. You will not find anything inside here. You have to go into the Facebook account. And since I don't have a Facebook account, I contact a friend of mine, ask him to join the group just to send me the link to download the beta version. So I would like that URL to be added inside the change log or into the account page. So let's go to the website and this is the website that we're going to play with. I have created a custom post type named cars and I have created some custom fields using the ACF. If I go to the custom fields here, I will find the car details named group here for the ACF. And if I open here, I will see that I have model, engine, horsepower, vehicle type, transmission, gearbox, color, doors, seats. Let's close that. And let's go to the page and edit that with bricks. So let's start creating something for an archive page and we're going to add here the container. I'm going to click here and this container for me plays the role of a section. So let's go here and let's go stretch. Let's go put that in the center. And for style, I'm going into the layout and I'm going to put 75 and 75 for the padding. After that, I'm going to add inside here another container and this one will play the role of my div that contains the main content. So let's go and add here a heading element. And this should say used cars. This is an H1. Okay, and I'm going to put that in the middle. Let's save that and see if it's taking the changes in the front end. Okay. We're okay and we can start building our archive page. So after that, I'm going to add another container underneath that. Let's go click here into the container and let's add another container. And let's go and put some margin into the heading. So let's go for margin and bottom, let's select uh, 40. Okay, as you can see here, we have also the minimum width, maximum width, and minimum height, maximum height. These are new addition that we have in this version. Now, I would like that to be in three columns, like the padding and the margin, and not one underneath the other, so it will take less space. Okay, let's go here into the container, and now we have a new thing inside the content that it says use query loop. This is something that you should enable in order to use the query loop builder. You will find also this function inside the accordion and inside the slider elements. So let's add this one, and now I can select the query here. And let's start by selecting the type. The type has post, terms, and users. Post means that you can select content to grab from a post, from pages or custom post types. Terms means taxonomies and users means, of course, the users. And we're going to select the posts. Then we have the post type and this is the cars. And as you can see, you can also select the post, the pages or products if you have your WooCommerce inside here. Let's click here again. So then we have the order by, so you can select order by none, ID, author, title, publish date, modified date, random, or comment count. I'm going for a uh, title. And then we can select the descending or ascending. I'm going to leave it as descending. I have the post per page, and this is 10, and I'm going to select five. Offset, if you want to add any offset here, and then you have the include post, so you can select to include some post that you can that you want to add, or you can exclude the post that you don't want to see inside here. 
Also, you can select to exclude the current post. So if you are adding uh, something inside the post like view similar posts, then you can use this so it will not include inside those uh, recommended articles the article that you are reading. And then we have the terms to include, so you can select which makers, for me, the taxonomy is maker, and terms also to exclude. After that, we have the taxonomy query. This is also a filtering, but it's more advanced, so you can select something from the taxonomy, and you can select based in the term ID, based in terms, and you can also select in, not in, and exist or not exist. And also we have a meta query, so we can select something from our custom fields in order to select what we want to include or exclude inside the loop builder. Okay, I'm not going to add anything inside here, so let's uh, deselect that. And now we're ready to start building the container. We're going to start by adding two columns in order to create something like an image in the left and the content in the right. So let's go and add now uh, two containers side here. Okay, and I'm going to put those uh, horizontal. Okay, after that, inside that container, I'm going to put the uh, width to be 40%, layout and width to be 40%. And now I can add an image. And now let's select the image. And as you can see, it also grabbing uh, other four elements because I have select five posts to be shown inside the query loop builder. Okay, so select here the content and for the select dynamic data, I'm going to select the featured image. Okay, this is the one. And after that, let's go inside that container and I'm going to put all the content in the center. I'm going to add inside here the heading of the post and we have two ways to do that. The one is to add a heading and for the heading let's go and then and delete that and select here and select the post title and this will bring us the post title. So if I save that and refresh here I will see now that I have the post title inside here. But we have also another way to add the post title by using the post title element so delete that and let's go here and add the post title and by using that the post title uh, you can also link that to the url of the post so if i select now the post title i have here that says link to post and i can enable that so now the title is something that you can click and go directly into the post so if you want to add that feature you can do easily with that link to post now, of course, you can do that also in the heading, but it will acquire more steps and we're going to see those steps when we add the button. So now that we have here the title, I'm going to add also some uh, basic text and I'm going to put one underneath the other. So let's go for basic text. Let's put that inside here and I'm going to duplicate that sometimes. Let's first delete that. Okay and let's first add some content so let's go down into the acf and here we have the model engine so let's go for engine and i'm going to put in front of that engine and semicolon space okay so now that we have the engine i can select that to be duplicated clone clone and clone let's go for four times now keep in mind that i'm not going to worry about the style at this moment this is only for the functionality of the query loop builder so let's go and select the second one and this should be perhaps let's see the horsepower okay so let's delete that and put hp after that the third one let's see what we can add here we have uh, transmission okay so let's copy that and put that in front semicolon space and put the T capital okay and then let's uh, change that to something different like seats 
seats and put here seats. Okay. Let's go now into this container and add a little bit of padding. Layout and let's put a little bit of padding everywhere. So, so let's go for 20. Something like that. Let's save that and see in the front end. Of course, it's not going to look great. And you can see how it looks at this moment. So let's go and select that container again. Let's go for the content and let's uh, put space around perhaps. But I have to use the stretch in order to put that or space evenly. Something like that. Okay. And also I have to add a button inside here at the bottom. So let's add also the button. And let's select the button and change that to see more. And now I'm going into the link type. I'm going to select here to be dynamic data and then select here to be the post URL, post link. This is the one. And now let's go into the container and I'm going to change something here. Since this is the container of the loop, I'm going to name it something different and I'm going to name it as cars loop. This will help me later on to find what is the uh, element that contains the loop builder, the loop functionality. And also when I add the pagination in the bottom of the page, it will let me select the element easier. Let's also change a little bit of margin inside that element. So let's go into the style and let's go for the layout and select the margin at the bottom. Now let's go for a link and let's go for 10 everywhere. Okay. And uh, maybe I will put something for a background. So let's go into the colors for the background and select something like a gray, light gray. Let's go for a lighter gray, something like that. Okay. Let's save that and see how it looks in the front end. Okay, it's not too great, but it's not too bad, so we can work with that. And if we go and click into the title of the car, we'll go ahead into the car. And this is how I have created the single page of the car's custom post type. Again, I'm not going to style it more. This is how it looks, and I'm not going to play with the layout at this moment. So let's go now and add in the bottom of the page the pagination. So we have this pagination and this is a new element. And now if I go at the bottom, have I added? I think I haven't. So let's add that. And you can put that inside the content, but outside the loop builder or outside anywhere else. So let's select that and let's select the content. And now we have the main query and I'm going to select that. And now I have the cars loop. This is how I named my container cars loop so i select that and now i can see that it has four pages let's put that in the middle and let's go also into the container and put a little bit of margin layout and margin 20. okay now let's save that and see how it looks in the front end let's go back to the cars the used cars and now if I go here, I can select the two and I can see now the second page. Three and I can see the third page. As you can see, the query loop builder is something that you can easily use to create more advanced archive pages. Now, at this moment, we don't have conditional settings, so you cannot hide anything that you don't want to appear if it's not filled. So if inside a car I haven't select and filled out the horsepower, it will show only the HP semicolon inside here with no number. Of course, the conditional settings are going to come inside the Bricks Builder, but I would like to see it uh, soon enough to use it with the Query Loop Builder. So that was all for the video. Please give me a thumbs up if you like the video. Subscribe to my channel for more videos like that. And I will see you all in the next one. Bye, guys.